Hello everyone, today we are going to be looking at how different underwater technology measures specific ocean properties. So there were three videos, two of which were from Woodhull's Oceanographic Institution, and they looked at the loop current eddies, and one that was from NOAA, which looked at hurricane intensity. So I'm going to focus on Woodhull's first. And their research was brought on by the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. So after the spill, they were not sure where the oil was going to spread, especially under the surface, because it was near the loop current, and they thought it was going to go around Florida and up the East Coast. However, an eddy concentrated it within one area. But afterwards, they decided that more research needed to be put into that area and what underneath the gulf looks like so they can address future situations of the same matter. So they used two different tools, spray gliders and rapos floats. So the spray gliders were like submarines. They were sent into the ocean and at about 500 meters. They measured data, came up every few hours and sent email like things through an antenna and then went back down and got more information and it was kind of a continuous process like that. And then the rainbow's floats were very different. They were glass tubes that sunk to a specific depth. They floated around according to sound beacons and they were on a two year expedition where the data was being gathered and then it was all gonna come to the surface at once when they arose. So they were met both measuring the loop currents and eddies of the Gulf of Mexico, but in a very different fashion. Yeah, they found incredible discoveries. The spray gliders determined that there was an eddy around the well after the spill, which allowed the resources to be specifically concentrated in Louisiana where it was worth worse rather than spending extra time and money um, on the East Coast where it could have been if the loop current had carried it. Then the um, Rafos floats discovered that the East Coast of the Gulf had a lot of eddies, whereas the Western side there was a boundary current that kind of stuck the water to the side and then it sprung up in the middle and there was like a highway underwater that sent the water to the gulf, um, which showed the hidden pathways, which was really neat. And this has major impacts for future studies, um, hopefully allowing them to map the topography of the whole gulf with the eddies and loop current specifically, but also with mountains and trenches that may be there. Um, and then the Spray gliders also will provide information. So by finding eddies, if there's future oil spills or major pollution from corporations, they can kind of track where it's gonna go and hopefully stop it before it gets too bad. Then the final video looked at hurricane intensity. And the goal of this was to make better hurricane predictions. And they used hurricane gliders, which were similar to the spray gliders. And they were sent down, they collected data, popped up, um, sent the information, and then went back down. And so information was gathered frequently about hurricanes to discover more about the temperature of the ocean. And so at the end, they discovered how deep hot and cold layers were underneath and in front of storms, which allowed them to better identify what the storm was going to do and prepare people accordingly. So this allows better future forecasting of hurricanes in areas that are hard to measure and gives data needed to get the correct intensity um, depending on where the hurricane is. So each of these tools measure unique properties of the ocean. The results of the studies help scientists better understand the ocean and humans address events that directly and indirectly affect them then proceed accordingly. Thank you so much.